Hello out there, and today we're going to be taking a look at the V Knives Thai Sportster. And this knife right here in front of you is the first ever knife from V Knives that I've had on this channel. And I have to thank the people at V themselves for this opportunity because they sent this knife plus one other uh, D2, like a little more budget knife, uh, out to our pass around group for everybody to check out and review and and handle and just get a feel for and. Yeah, I'm really appreciative of that because when I was at Blade Show West a couple months ago, I had some tough decisions with my finances and had to decide uh, uh, what knives to buy and which ones to uh, to pass on. And I did have a V knife that I was very interested in and I passed on it. So getting the opportunity to, to handle these two knives over the past week or so uh, has just been, yeah, it's been a pleasure. And I, yeah, I really appreciate it. So link to the product description of this knife down below if you want to check it out on their website. Now when it comes to this versus the uh, the D2 model uh, that's right here, uh, the Thai the Sportster is the one I wanted to focus on because it seems to be more of the like flagship for V uh, in terms of, of them sort of operating at, I guess, their highest level. I wanted to see what that was all about. And while I'm not going to say that this isn't a good knife because in a lot of ways it is. Uh, there are a lot of things about this knife, especially in the design phase, that I, I very much enjoy. Um, the big problem with it is that on a competitive like level with the rest of the marketplace, it just doesn't stand up for the price point. Uh, this one costs $225 uh, most places that you see it. And um, again, it isn't a bad knife, and I'm not going to say that if you invested that kind of money in this knife, you'd be disappointed. But I do know that there is plenty out there, you know, in the knife industry um, with similar, if not better, materials for much less that is executed better than this knife. And uh, there's a lot that goes into to why. Um, a lot of it's speculation on my part, and we'll get into all that. We'll talk about this company and, and the potential here, because if nothing else, there is a lot of potential uh, for the people at V-Knives to grow and and continue to fine-tune their models and, and hopefully become a real competitor uh, in the community in the near future. So... Let's just start, though, with what the knife is all about, because that's the most important thing. So what we have here is a blade of right around 3.75 inches, so a pretty darn long knife uh, of 154 cm blade steel. You can see it is a worn cliff, and then um, from tip to butt, we are looking at, man, what is this, like 8.5 inches, I think, total overall. So, yeah, a pretty darn long knife. A little bit outside of what you know my typical comfort level would be but I really do like the design and so <laughs> for me it's something I definitely would be willing to overlook if the right knife came along you know when it comes to uh, looking at the knife in the closed position it really isn't all that chunky not the most thin knife but Looks good closed, open, like I'd said, it is pretty long, but uh, just for a size comparison, let's bring in the Paramilitary 2, lining up the tips, you can see the Thai Sportster has about a half to three quarters of an inch in overall length on the Paramilitary 2, but it also has that on the blade, so, you know, it's just a, a longer knife. Um, Titanium frame lock on this one, and not a lot of milling on the inside, but for the size, it's not particularly heavy. 4.7 ounces. Uh, I know probably a lot of people are going to read that and think it is heavy, but it doesn't feel heavy in the hand. So yeah, I have zero issue with the weight on this knife at all. Now, focusing on the blade for a minute... Uh, we do have 154 cm blade steel, uh, and when it comes to the competitive value and everything, that's probably going to be one area where a lot of people will knock this knife and say, "Oh, well, 154 cm it it doesn't really have value at the 225 dollar price point." And while I agree on principle 
with that statement. What I will say is that if the rest of the knife were executed as well as I would hope it would be, then I don't think that 154CM would bother me at all. You know, really good steel is, it's, it's always a good thing, but a lot of times it can mask some of the other deficiencies with the knife, and I think had this knife really delivered on some of the other aspects that bug me about it, that the 154CM wouldn't be that big of a deal. But as it is, you know, it's definitely going to be a talking point for a lot of people because there are some fit and finish issues and it has, you know, a, a knife steel that you wouldn't really expect on a tie frame lock of 225 bucks. So there's that. Um, taking a look at this blade and the blade stock, it is relatively thick. Let's see what we have here that I can actually bring out to compare it to. Here, so let's see, the ZT0393, actually pretty comparable when it comes to the blade stock. So this does look to be like a, a pretty decent knife for a lot of EDC tasks, especially with that Warncliffe blade and a very you know, refined point, uh, definitely not going to be good for prying, <laughs> but for, yeah, just a lot of utility tasks, it'll be great. Now talking about the blade though, this is where I really run into some of the, the first fit and finish problems and things that jump out at me about this knife that I just don't like. And uh, a lot of it is just extra sharpness on the spine of the knife here and the finishing between you know, the flat and the spine. I mean, it's almost sharp enough to like cut yourself on <laughs> if you run your finger on it the wrong way. And again, that's just not the expectation when you have a knife at this price point uh, that you expect to be executed at a certain level and it's just, it's just rough. You know, it just isn't finished all that well. When you get to the jimping, you can see there's a lot of it and it's very grippy. You can look at the, the angle of it right there. And I like that a lot. I like how it grips the thumb so well, but it's it's too much. <laughs> and I know you're not going to hear me say that very often, but when I put my thumb, even just putting it down on here, it's almost like it's sticky because my skin is like getting stuck between the, uh, you know, the the grooves here. And the concern I think is not so much just for light tasks, you know, because it's going to grip the thumb really well, but when you bear down on this knife, you know, when you bear down on this, I mean, you're going to get caught, you know, and if you're using this and cutting with this for any amount of time, I mean, this is going to tear your, your thumb up. Look at that. You can actually, you know, I mean, it, it is not gonna, <laughs> it's going to tear you up, man. So yeah, good jimping, good grippy jimping is a positive thing, but on this knife, it, it just goes so far that here, let me, you know, and I wasn't even pushing down that hard. So just using this knife for a long duration of time, I can tell you it, it isn't going to be a, a, a very pleasant thing. Now, looking at the knife from the open position, you can see we have an open frame. We have the titanium um, like frame lock here. There is just a slight, very, very slight bit of up and down movement. Uh, I wouldn't even necessarily call it play. It's just not the, the most secure lockup. I think it's perfectly safe. And I think that in a $20 knife, I might not even mention it in a review because it's, it's very, very subtle. But at this price point, um, my expectation, and I have very few knives, by the way, guys, very few knives that are that are this expensive or more expensive, and my expectation at this price point is essentially perfection. The knife better be perfect, and so with some of those fit and finish things up top, that tiny little bit of movement, uh, it's not a deal breaker for a lot of knives, but for this one, yeah, it definitely would be. Um, otherwise, I mean, the lockup looks good, uh, but... You know, it just isn't perfect. And then as we move on back, you can see we have these like barrel spacers and again, not trying to be too fussy and from a functional level, it doesn't really matter, but 
I want something a little more than just these boring, like, unfinished, just, you know, pieces of metal. You know, here's the Kaiser Theta. Nothing too fancy here, but at least there's some work done on a, that, that standoff. Much cheaper knife, too. And, I mean, we could beat a dead horse doing this all day, just talking about little nitpicky things that aren't great about it. But again, I'm just trying to illustrate the point that uh, this is not a bad knife, but it just isn't at the level of what they're asking you to pay for it. Um, one other thing you'll notice, there is a one position pocket clip. Uh, it is not a particularly deep carry. Uh, that doesn't really bother me, again, with, with uh, knives of this size. I don't, I don't mind there being a little bit of real estate, but uh, with this, I'll, I'll show you the picture of it. Um, they could stand to maybe have just you know a little bit higher of a mounting position on this clip. I don't really love the clip design, but it does sort of blend with the, the lock side of the knife. So it isn't terrible, but if it were just moved up a little bit, I think I would appreciate it a little bit more. One of the really high points of the knife is, uh, is the action. And it's not really like on bearings or anything. It's just a thumb stud opening knife. But it works. It works well. Uh, I like the, the smoothness of it. It's crisp deployment. Um, the detent is pretty good. So, yeah, some positivity there. And definitely some positivity when it comes to, like, the centering and, yeah, just a lot of aspects of the knife uh, that, that really work. Ergonomics for me really work. I mean, it's a big knife, so you have plenty of space to, to get a good grip. Um, the titanium here, it has what seems to be like a, a slight coating, but it's not anything particularly grippy. It is a little bit slick. But um, but yeah, just the, the shape, the overall shape of the knife works to the extent that uh, I don't really have an issue at all. And ergonomically, yeah, it's it's very good. And I think people with larger hands than me are going to uh, to find it pretty darn good as well. You know, the, the only real issue is is jimping here that, that could present a problem. So overall, you know, I, I've sort of hit on, on the problems with the knife and the things that that sort of take away from it being as good as it could be. And in a second, I'll bring in some competitive options to, to further illustrate the way that I see the knife. But I do want to say real quickly that when we spend money, and, and maybe a, maybe I'm alone here, but I doubt it. Uh, when we spend money, what, what tends to happen is the, the investment itself on a knife or whatever it is, uh, it hurts at first, but then over time, you, you start to forget that you spent some money. You know, like if you spend a couple hundred dollars on something, a month later, you, you'll think about it and be like, oh, wow, I wasted my money, or wow, that was a good investment, but you no longer miss that money. And I guess the point that I'm trying to make, the positive thing here that I'm trying to say is that if you were to invest the money in this knife, um, even if you overpaid for it, if you like the knife, Eventually, it's not going to bug you that you spent that much money, you know, and and looking at this That's why at the beginning of the video I said, you know, if you like this design, you'll probably end up liking the knife um, You know, it is a, a very good design and I don't dislike the knife. I just know that there is just a Plenty of better things to spend your money on so bringing in a couple others and, and the company that I think of most when I think of knives that look like this is, is Kaiser you know, Kaiser with the titanium frame locks, S35VN is what they use, but uh, this knife right here, the Rogue, a lot smaller, sure, and, and all the ones I'm about to bring in are going to be smaller, but they're all just executed better, and they're significantly cheaper. The Rogue is one. The Theta is another. You know, all of these are titanium frame locks. The Kaiser Cordo right here, um, they're all cheaper. They all have better materials. And they're all built better. And so for a company like V Knives, I, I think it's difficult for them to uh, to really compete uh, with the big boys. They're trying, and it's, it's a good effort, I think, in a lot of ways. And especially, like I said, in the design phase. But um, as far as execution goes, uh, they have some ways to go. 
and I hope to see that from them. You know, this is a young company. Uh, they're they're trying to get their their feet wet and and kick the door open and and make an impact on the marketplace. And I think they have the basis and the foundation to be able to do that. They just need to continue to improve what they're doing and the product, the production and manufacturing, and get to a point where if they're going to charge two twenty five, which hey, you want to know what small batches. Uh, you know, smaller smaller makers, a lot of companies, they, they have to do that. They have to charge more in order to stay competitive, you know, because it is harder for them to um, to get back that, that capital that they spend on, on production. But, um, but regardless, I, I mean, I'd really like to see what they can do in the future and how they can grow and if they'll be able to, uh, to really compete on a quality level. Because once they can do that, I mean, the design is there. The design for this knife is definitely there couple other things real quick, and I know this is going to be a longer video, but a couple other things about V knives. Uh, one of the really cool things about them is their packaging. So the, the knives come with an interesting box here. And the thing about it that's interesting is that V knives themselves, uh, they're pretty adamant about being able to use these boxes for multi-purposes. And so the box here, like you can rip the, the foam out in here and use it as like a um like a, a first aid kit or just any other kind of kit and and one of the things on their website that they do is they try to promote uh, people you know doing different things with the boxes instead of just like keeping the knife in it so that's pretty interesting you can check that out on their website and then last thing to talk about is this d2 version of a uh, a knife uh, this is just a, a, the second one that was in the group, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I am just going to point out like some of the things about this knife that sort of uh, hold true with the titanium one over here, just that, yes, this is a D2 knife, and for the materials and the quality, it just it just isn't there. You know, it's the same kind of thing. This is a $60 knife. The design is really good, actually, even though I'm not a Tanto fan. I like the design. I really like the Ergos, just like with the other knife. But there's just a lot of opportunity for, like, milling and, you know, improved, just improved execution with uh, with both of these knives. So, yeah, um, not bashing either of these but just hoping to see more in the future because uh, for me at least uh, at this price point, uh, neither of these is going to stand up to its competition in the marketplace. So that's really all I have, guys. Uh, again, I uh, was very interested to, uh, to check these out. Thankful that I got to do it. Um, would love to hear your take on it. So any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know down below. But yeah, I'll talk with you soon. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching and take care.